Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. I'm back with my full review of the LG Velvet. I've been using this phone for a couple of weeks now and I feel pretty confident to say that it's a pretty decent phone. It has a lot of things going for it, but one of the things that's not a lot is the price tag. And it even has the dual screen option, just like last year's models, the G8X, the V50, and this year's V60. V so a lot of things to look at here. And before we get into that though, I do want to say, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates on when new videos come out. Now let's take a look at the LG Velvet. All right, so a lot of things have changed this year with LG. And this is their first phone that comes as part of the strategy that came from that change. They've gone with the G series and the V series for a really long time. We've known them, they've been around for years, and they've shifted their strategy to start naming their devices real names. No more G, no more, no more V series, starting with the Velvet. When the device comes out, they're going to start giving it some sort of meaningful name that better fits the phone. When it comes to the Velvet, one thing I think I would have liked to have seen is maybe some sort of a frosted texture on the back that gave it more of a velvety feel, because let's face it, people kind of associate that with the word velvet. But what we'll call it is velvety smooth and velvety sleek because it really is. It is a really nice design. It's got the raindrop pattern on the back for the cameras with the large one at the top going down towards the bottom. 48 megapixel camera. It has an eight megapixel wide angle camera, which is perfectly good for taking photos. And then it has a five megapixel depth sensor on the back. It's powered by the Snapdragon 765G, which is a 5G chipset. So if you're in the market to get a 5G phone and you don't wanna to spend tons and tons of money, which is kind of what 5G is associated with. You look at the S20 series, you look at the upcoming Note 20 series, you look at the OnePlus series phones, a lot of the phones are out there that have 5G, but they're not really in the lower price bracket. And what LG has done with the Velvet is they've created a really, really good mid-tier phone that also has 5G. The only thing that really kind of irks me about this phone is the fact that it doesn't have facial recognition. It only has a fingerprint sensor, which is underneath the screen. And let me show you, I mean, it works perfectly fine. There's no problems with the fingerprint sensor. I don't know if I can get the screen to turn off there but it has an under the screen fingerprint sensor, which works really well. It has wireless charging. It has IP68 dust and water resistance. It has everything you could possibly ask for. It has stereo speakers. It's got even the ability to do ASMR recording because it has an HD audio recorder. And that's one of the features that it has is the ability to do ASMR. And if that's your thing, I mean, it's totally cool. Not really my thing, but if you like ASMR stuff and you want to record stuff and don't want to have to have a fancy microphone, this has it. It has a 6.8 inch OLED display and a 4300 milliamp battery, which should get you all the way through the day without any problem. And it looks really nice. They call it cinematic OLED. It looks really good and it's very close to the 21 by nine aspect ratio. It's 20 by five by nine. So it's not super, super thin, but at the same time, it still looks good and it looks great for widescreen whenever you're watching videos. So this is a great phone for content consumption. And when you pair the 765G with that 4300 milliamp battery, you get some good battery life, but you also get really good performance because it's a very balanced chipset. The Snapdragon 765 doesn't leave you hanging out in the wind. It gives you plenty of power to play games. You can play PUBG on here. You can play Fortnite on here. You can play Call of Duty Mobile on here. There's a lot that you can do with this device but you can also do more with your pocketbook because you're not having to spend $1,000 to get one. The camera setup is really nice on here. I went and I went downtown and I took a bunch of pictures with it. And here you can see a bunch of the pictures that I took, but the 48 megapixel standard camera, and then it's got the eight megapixel wide, and then it has a 16 megapixel selfie camera. So it's got everything that you could possibly want. And it takes good pictures and it even has manual mode on there. So if you're, one of those people that's really good at photography and you don't like to rely on the settings you get when you just press it for the auto mode, you can go into manual mode and use it that way. And it even has a night mode so you can take outdoor pictures with it as well at nighttime. Like I said, stereo speakers that sound really good. You've got the speaker on the bottom and the top one, which is the handset speaker. It also comes out there as well. So 
It's really good for enjoying content, watching movies, playing games, all that good stuff. And then the other thing that you get is the dual functionality of a second screen. All you have to do is take the phone, you pop it in here, and then you get the second screen, which functions independently of this screen. It's like having two different phones in one, which is really nice. Now, the problem with this, though, is that it siphons off the battery from the regular phone. And then on the bottom, you've got the mag lock, which comes with a special adapter you can plug the USB-C connector into, which is what charges the phone inside the case. But just so you know, if you do use the dual screen, it's going to draw the battery from the phone and the battery life will diminish faster. That's just the way things work. And it's not necessarily bad, but just something to keep an eye on that battery meter if it starts going down faster than you expect it to. It's because it's using two screens. You can close it, you get the second dual readout on the front here, so you can get access to your notifications and the time and the date, which is nice. And then you still have access to your buttons. It has a dedicated Google Assistant button, which is really nice. You have the phone open, press that Google Assistant button, and then it pops up, so you can activate and start talking and do all that good stuff. And of course, it's reading off what I'm saying right now. But the other nice thing is, you get great protection for your phone, so you don't have to worry about messing up your phone while you have this on here. And then it does kind of get a little annoying when you're trying to type and you have these two screens here just because it gets in the way, but you can flip it around to the back, that second screen will shut off, and then you have full access to the phone as you normally would without having to worry about the second screen getting in the way because seriously, when you're trying to type on your phone like this, it gets a little old. It does have dual screen support for a lot of different apps. You can use it for internet, for Chrome, sorry. <laughs> I'm old school and sometimes the words Internet Explorer seep into my vocabulary when talking about the internet. You can use Google Chrome on here. It'll split it across the dual screens. It works great with YouTube. You can use it like this across both screens or you can flip it up and then you have the top on the top screen and the bottom on the bottom screen or the chat and the comment section on the bottom, which is really nice. And it's also really good for playing video games. When you're playing video games, you can use the LG gamepad feature whenever the game pops up and you can turn the bottom part of the screen into a controller so you're not fiddle farting with the screen and having to play like this. It's really annoying when you play video games on phones. The screen is already cramped enough already, but then you're sitting there trying to use your thumbs in the same space that you're moving your character around. This is one great way to get around that and it works really well. So this is a really ideal phone for gamers because it makes it so much easier and it's nice to be able to control it on the bottom. There's different controls that you can pick too, different control schematics for driving games, fighting games, shooting games, all that good stuff. It's been a really nice experience. I like this phone a lot. I really liked the LG V60 and I was waiting for this one to come out for quite a while. It took a little bit longer to trickle over to the United States. It's something I've been really interested in a long time and I heard the rumors for a while that the G series is going away, the V series is going away and I was kind of concerned about that because I really love the G8, I really love the G7. They've made some really good devices over the years. I mean, some of my favorite phones in the Android world have been LG, so like the G2, I love the G Flex, the G Flex 2. They did some really groundbreaking stuff. They were the first ones in the US to have a phone that had Quad HD Plus resolution, which was the G3. So LG has been very inventive in a lot of ways, and I'm glad that they're adjusting now and shifting more towards a phone-centric, phone-first, model as opposed to just putting out the same stuff each year and shipping, you know, putting another name on it like a G7 or a V7 or a G8. I like the device strategy here. I like the pricing strategy and I hope that it works for them. And I think that this is a really solid phone, especially for $599. You can't go wrong. It works great. And if you had any hesitations about using a 7 series processor, let me tell you, they're really good. They give you a lot of the power and performance that an 8 series chipset does, but it gives you more balance and it gives you better battery life like a 6 series processor. And then this one has 5G, so you can get access to the expanded 5G networks, which is especially important on some of the new networks like T-Mobile. It works pretty darn good. One other thing I do want to talk about is it still has a headphone jack on it. Now, it's kind of hard to get the headphone jack cable in here when the dual case is on. If you have like an elbow connector, it won't fit in there at all, more than likely. And you just have to make sure you have one that's not oversized because some of the headphone jacks are a little bit oversized, but some of them can get in here, but it works great if you don't have this case on here. And LG actually has some cases that they make. Uh, they have these design skin cases. I'll put some links in the drop down. 
This one came with mine as the review unit, but I like this one a lot. So there are some options out there, and I'll put some other options down there as well for some ones that are good that are out on Amazon. But the headphone jack is really good. It doesn't have the quad DAC like they're known for, so it's not going to sound as good as like the V60 or the V50, which really have the best sounding audio in phones that I know of and that I've tested out. But this one does sound really good. Since it didn't have the quad 32-bit DAC in it, I was a little concerned that it wasn't gonna sound very good, but I plugged my earbuds in, and I gotta tell you, I'm not the greatest audiophile in the world, but I really, I couldn't tell the difference. It sounded really good to me. So that's all I have on my review of the LG Velvet. It's a solid phone at a solid price tag, great performance, all day battery, and I forgot to say this earlier, but it has 128 gigabytes of storage and six gigabytes of RAM, and you can update it. I mean, you can put an SD card in here up to two terabytes. So if you're worried about extra storage space, they got you covered there, and it's $599. So that's all I've got. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you're interested in the device, hopefully I gave you some of the information that you needed so you can make a decision on whether you wanna pick one up or not. As far as I know right now, as of August the 16th, they're only available on AT&T, but I've been told by LG they're supposed to be available on other carriers like T-Mobile and Verizon by the end of the summer. Hopefully they hit that deadline and you can get one of these new phones for yourself if you're interested because I don't know about unlocked model availability. I haven't seen any yet, so that's all I've got. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I will get back with you. As always, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you guys next time.